I'm Lori Lovell Barr, and this is In My City. Welcome guys, today's episode, we are here at Chantel's Just Until in Sanford, Florida, and we're sitting here with Miss Chantel Williams. <laughs> it is sitting so here great. with you love. Look at you, okay. look at you. I love being with you. Same. It's so great to be here at the restaurant and everything. This is great. I remember this our first great. time we met. Oh my gosh, do you remember? <laughs> you want to tell the story? You want to tell okay. the story? Oh my gosh, great story, great story, guys. We, um, I work, me and my, um, my friend, I call him my stalker, <laughs> we're, we're coming from uh, the store, mm -hmm. and I see these black people, and I'm like, hey, they don't, they don't, they don't look familiar. <laughs> and I was wondering why you guys weren't down at my restaurant, <laughs> being that you guys don't look familiar. Uh -huh. So I'm like, excuse me. It, nobody answered. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, miss. And then I get a... Yeah, I was like, hi, how are you? And I let them know, yeah, you know, where are you guys from? Or mm -hmm. what are you guys doing here? I pretty much wanted to know. Yeah. And I said, well, do you know anything about Chantel? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, you should know. Yes. I dragged them down here to the restaurant, and the rest we were, is history. What, the rest was history, but we were here. We walked down. We literally were just scouting out some places, and um, we, we ran and Chantel ran at us and told us about her restaurant and stuff. And I, you guys know I'm a foodie, love food. And that was here about a good four hours. Oh, that's what I was just about to say. Four hours here straight, having a great time, just with Chantel, her company, just just in the food. The food, but we are going to get into our interview. Okay, okay. No and problem. the first thing we're going to start off with is what drove you to, into the restaurant business? Well, I'm a mother of 10, mm. so I was cooking anyway. Mm. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say one thing I remember um, having a, a business card with just my name on it. Wow. And, it, you know, it's like an eagle's nest at my house, so I had to drop the worm in everybody's mouth. Wow. Sometimes. Sometimes I have a worm. Mm -hmm. And so for that, you become to, you, you the mindset, if I spend money, I'm, I need to make money. Right. In order to keep the circle going. Mm -hmm. And so, um, first I remember I did hair, I seamstress. Wow. I um, remember making soap, oils, lotions, you name it, I was doing it. And my first time doing food publicly, mm -hmm. I was at a, a Rutgers basketball game in New York. In New York. Oh my gosh, those games are awesome. So yes. you did a Rutgers game. And girl, listen, I think I had about I had about twenty five dollars. Wow. And I bought a bag of uh, the name brand was Holy mm -hmm. Whiting Fish. Mm. I bought a case of water mm -hmm. and I bought um, some bread. I had a butane fryer. I put a little pan on it, filled it with oil. Mm -hmm. I sold fish sandwich fish sandwiches and I made $125 wow. off that bag. I, $25. I mean, it from $25. Man, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was just like, mm. I went right back to the store, bought two bags. <laughs> In that thing. Right. I love that. I love that. So it was a, a mistake in a sense mm. of I remember I was pregnant and I had uh, two babies in the stroller mm -hmm. and I had a, a five year old. And so I was like, you know, let me just sit and let me figure out. And from then on, every other weekend I do it. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, um, it blossomed into something great. Wow. But then I had to backtrack because then I got a daughter that was a type 1 diabetic. Wow. And uh, she was uh, diagnosed at age 2. Mm -hmm. So me trying to fine tune her blood sugars and the doctor literally told me, if you don't change the way you're cooking, she'll be dead by 15. So I was just like, okay, that's um, that's for real. So motivation. Um, so I came up with, I started making my own seasoning. Wow. So my. So would, all that from just hearing what you know that. First of all, I can't imagine someone telling me that if yeah. I don't chart, start changing my lifestyle, I'm going to kill, kill your kill kids. My, yeah, yeah. Kill, 
Wow. Yeah. So you so from that from the um, from the seasonings now yeah. that you that you go went into I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but go ahead. Go. So the seasonings. I started doing well. You know, again reading labels. Uh huh. I could never find because our blood sugars would go up. Right. So they were so irregular, right. and I knew I was doing and measuring everything they said to me. And I'm like, but I still don't know. Mm -hmm. So I found that was the seasoning. So the salt, the preservatives yes. that they okay. used to okay. keep the seasoning, mm -hmm. often MSG, mm -hmm. often a lot of sugar mm -hmm. or a lot of salt to preserve it. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing my own. And from me starting doing my own, I started wanting to sell my own seasoning. So uh -huh. I remember being my first time on the shelf which is at Adams Fairy Co Farms in New York, mm -hmm. um, Newburgh, New York. Mm -hmm. um, since then, we're in Whole Foods, we're in wow. Trader Joe's. So for the last nine years. Nine and, years. Yeah. So it started, Chantel's what we know today, uh, the comfort food, which you taste and love, the uh -huh. Southern, mm -hmm. the Caribbean, done with my seasoning line. Oh, And so, exactly. no preservatives. And, hey, here we are. Wow. If I was cooking anyway. Y'all eat, we eat, we yeah. eat, it's all good. And I love the way how, not only did you just make a product, but you made something healthy for us. You gave yeah. us that alternative that we yeah. needed. Yeah. That is it's, so great. And it is so needed, because we, we, I think, because I had never heard of a type one diet, I never heard of a diabetic being in a baby at that age. Right. I always knew sugar mm -hmm. was, Oh, oh, that's the old people get that. Mm. And the doctor was like, well, it could be this, it could be young as well. Right. I said, but it's not hereditary. I don't have it in my family. Mm -hmm. And so it was a wake up call. It was a great, a great bad thing. So how long has the business been established? Since, we've been here since 2013. Wow. Uh, October. 2013. Wow. Yeah. So and we got coming up on a six years. Six years uh, yeah. anniversary. And why Sanford? Why Sanford so special to you? Why here in Sanford? And why in the heart of the history of Sanford are you here? Well, um, a couple of reasons. One, um, I'm not from Sanford, but okay. my grandparents and great grandparents lived here. And I remember coming summers here and I remember hating it. <laughs> Because, well, the grandparents, as a kid, we grew up in Panama, I grew up in Panama City, Florida. Mm -hmm. My gr my grandparents here, and we had central AC. Mm -hmm. They had AC in their room only. So I remember thinking, they ain't even got AC. I don't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, 20 years in New York and uh, being recently divorced, I mm -hmm. go, okay, I, want, I remember Sanford being really slow. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me go down here and give Sanford about three months and see how it works okay. out and oh yeah that's what I said yeah <laughs> and I seen their little economic uh, plan as to what they were going to be spending in the downtown area wow. um, over the next 10 years and it was something about 22 billion mm -hmm. and I go um, I think I need to get on up in this and this area where I'm at and I've had some opportunities to go elsewhere that the you know, economically, it would have been great. You right. know, money, financial wise, would have been great. However, the history of Sanford Avenue, yeah. this had been the black business district. Yes. And Sat Satchel Page, Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, mm. when anybody of color came to Sanford, this is Sanford Avenue, wow. they would come visit. And being that it had changed so much, mm -hmm. I figured it, it'd be me. Why not me? Mm. You know, to tell the story or to keep it going. And so uh, I wanted to stay. And so Sanford got at least 15 years with me. Wow. <laughs> so, 15 yeah, years. Yeah. Isn't it, that awesome? It, well, I'm saying they got it. They only had six so far. So they got at least another 15? nine. 15? Okay. Wow. All right, so. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. So that's what I'm thinking. Oh After that, goodness. I got some land out in. Uh, Williams, Arizona. So after that, I'm wow. gonna build a bed and breakfast out there. Oh my gosh! Oh, will you be will you be keeping Chantel's here or? Is yeah, that a, yeah. Okay, so Let's, so it's an expansion. Well, I won't do Chantel's there. I'll just I'll kind of live off the land, bed and breakfast. Oh. That's my plan. We'll see how we I go. I like that plan, so, though. Yeah, I like that. Plan. So God ain't making no more land. Sanford, so. you heard right? You only got fifteen. Yeah, nine more. Nine more. Okay. For me personally, but For you'll keep person, my kids. Right. Yeah. You'll have Chantel's. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we're a franchise. Oh, my know. God. But talking about, like, you know, expanding on what you want to do and things like that, let's talk about how that you're not only a restaurant, but you also do catering. Tell me the story about that. How did that get started? Because I know you, you said New York. You were doing you were doing the records and stuff. But how did that get started here? How does Chantel's Justin Still, just until, you know. Get started. Yes. Um, traveling from New York, being a traveling chef. I was a traveling chef for a couple of different companies, and we were considered the ethnic foods, the specialty foods. So, um, being that we could now use our own spice line, we could. Um, we, I was able to tell them and guarantee what wasn't in their food. Okay. And especially with the new disease like celiac disease, mm -hmm. or being a high high blood pressure, or a diabetic. Um, often uh, big companies would call me in and say, hey, do you do this? Right. And we put it out there when we lived in New York that, you know, we do comfort food um, that's, that's um, you know, color-free, soy-free, mm. you know. And so they wanted us. And so Sanford was one of the places where I remember catering about four or five weddings. Wow. And uh, so I knew, again, kind of what was getting ready to happen, mm -hmm. what was on the verge of happening. And... Um, I, I was just, I was happy to, to, I guess, tap into it at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I will say it was a downfall, but an upfall, because one thing Sanford is kind of famous for is the Trayvon Martin thing. Mm -hmm. And the post Trayvon Martin, I would say the pre or post, right. and then thereafter, Sanford really changed in terms of they were very separate. Mm -hmm. And I will say that silver lining and trade off brought them together. Excellent. So Excellent. one of the a sad story. Yeah, right? sad story, but it you know, we have the subdivisions such as Goldsboro, mm -hmm. um, Midway, mm -hmm. we have uh, Georgetown. Mm -hmm. All these they stayed in their perspective places, so right. to speak. Well, after Trayvon Martin it began to mingle, mm. it began to come together and to be there. Because the staying separate slowed us down, slowed Sanford down. Mm. So I think we've had growth, I'd say in the last eight years, about 20 years. Wow. If, if, and, and if anybody come from New York City, yeah. you'll see just what I mean, you know. You know it's a little slower, but again, eight years ago it was for real. Really? Yeah. So, I'm glad just to be a part of that and see it, you know, and hey, I ain't going away for a minute. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh my gosh, that tells so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the first part of this interview. But guys, when we come back, you're in for a treat because we will be tasting some of Chantel's and my favorite dishes. <laughs> Wish I had smell a vision. Mm. <laughs> when I come down here is your events and I my favorite one my favorite okay. event is Jazz and Chew every second Saturday of the month I yes. love that how you do it outside and everything but oh, oh, oh. I see our first dish oh my gosh so before we talk about the events going into the events and your weekly um, specials and things. What do we have right here in front? This is chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. Give you a variety of chicken, dark and white meat. I love it. I love uh, it. With a homemade batter, Belgian waffle. Oh. You know, our homemade little syrup we make. You know, we do a syrup blend. We'll do a maple, uh -huh. um, a pure cane sugar, no corn syrup. Ooh. You know, so, and then some butter. Oh, and butter. It's made with granola oil. Really? Yeah. No, no dairy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Yeah, girl. Don't do it. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. She get ready to relax them to this. Just, just you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while I, you know, yeah. stuff my face just a little bit. <laughs> I'll talk about the jazz and yes, chew. Yes, the jazz and chew right. and your weekly. Um, okay, weekly, weekly yes, schedule. Yes. Plus, we start the week off, and we're going to be starting the week off new. We're going to start the week off on a Tuesday now. Okay. Tuesday, we will have a seafood now. Normally, we used to close on uh, on Tuesdays, 
but now we're going to do a pop-up kitchen with my sister. Mm. Yeah, it's called Tea Seafood, and she'll do it on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And um, then Wednesday is our steak cigar and bring your own whiskey mm -hmm. Wednesday. And what happens there is we talk taboo. So you're able, this is a bottle club, so you're able to bring your own alcohol. Okay. Or fermented beverage. And uh, we take time and every opinion held to life. And so we enjoy that from 7 p.m. until Thursday's karaoke. Are you enjoying that? <laughs> Chantel, I just want to, I don't want to interrupt you because you're doing so great. You're doing so lovely. Thank you. Um, but this chicken here is to die for. I love, I love, love how just smooth it is, how just succulent the chicken <clears throat> is. The waffles are awesome. And the syrup, <laughs> I am one that I don't like to heavy drown my food into yeah. things, okay. right? Um, so I like how light it is, and I, I like how it complements. Yes, everything has its own separate flavor. And to blend them. It's like eating ice cream, I call yes, it. Yes. A salty so sweet. It. Yeah. It's really, really delicious. I love this. Thank you. Oh, Thank this you. is really, really good. <laughs> Look, we, I, listen, chicken and waffles is often some people would think that it's it's a new concept. Mm -hmm. But I remember eating for breakfast for dinner all the time. Mm. Whereas chicken and biscuits, oatmeal, grits, and fish. So it's a southern thing, certainly. So I. I love bringing the comfort or some childhood favorites. I yeah. love that. I love that. All right, so we left off with Wednesdays. Wednesdays, steaks, we got to bring home. Yes. Wednesday. Karaoke on Thursday. Yes, karaoke Thursday. Apollo night Friday. I love Apollo night Friday. Um, and la yesterday, last night, which is Friday, mm -hmm. it was phenomenal. We give guests, we, we do charge a $10 fee for that okay. because we give out cash prizes. Oh, that's so, so cool. So, yeah, you even have to the stomp, we have the tree stomp people uh -huh. rub on. Oh, my God. So, I love it's, that. it's, there you go. Bringing culture, bringing great food, great music, the jazz and chew, which you say is your favorite. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we'll have a live jazz band, and we call it in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And the chew of that day or that month. I'll be like last month, mm -hmm. we had, um, thank, thank you. you. We had, uh, let me see, jambalaya, mm -hmm. and gumbo. Mm -hmm. You know, ooh, we got another. Ooh. Okay. Here, this is our jerk chicken and rice. It comes Sorry. with our collard greens <clears throat> and cornbread. So I, I have to tell that. you that this is my favorite dish here, is that um, I love the jerk chicken here. It is so zesty. It's just perfectly right. The rice is seasoned to perfection. And, and brown the, rice, oh, believe it or not. No, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I know. You know, I found when I came down south, I came down south with saying, oh, healthy, healthy, healthy. Yeah. And nobody would come. <laughs> but I found out because I was pushing too much of the healthy thing. Mm. Now I let them taste it. And then I'll say, hey, did you know it's brown rice? They oh go, my goodness. No, no, I, I cook brown rice and it never tastes like that. I said, perhaps you didn't cook it, maybe perhaps you stirred it. I said, because you don't want to break it. You know, you want to just let it steam and don't touch it. Oh my God, this is so good. There's the, the jerk chicken on rice or, or the jerk chicken salad. Oh yeah, jerk chicken when Caesar salad. I'm, when yeah. I'm being good, when I'm being good. <laughs> You're still being bad, even when you're being good. Like one thing is great. A anybody that has any elements, mm -hmm. you come in your Chantel's, order off the menu. If you are vegan or vegetarian, we cook no meat products in all of our vegetables. Wow. So no, our collard greens don't have pork in them, don't mm -hmm. have any dairy in them. So you'll enjoy just tasting the green itself, you know. It is really really good Chantel oh my gosh thank you so so much You're welcome. <laughs> so the jazz and chew is every second every second Saturday mm -hmm. and we'll feature a live jazz band or yeah. two um, some singers mm -hmm. and we sit out under the big tent or the yes. stars yes. and just jam the night away I, I have so much fun yeah it's, it's meant to be just that. It is so awesome. Thank you. It's so awesome to, to be here with you. And talking about being here with you and 
just knowing how you're so involved in the community, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you are involved in the community and some of your, um, I love to say, her great accomplishments. I want to talk about Bessie. Okay. okay. Bessie yes, certainly. let's talk about Bessie. All right, well, um, let's say that, well, I'm a part of the community first. Mm -hmm. Being a mother of many, of ten children, mm -hmm. about building bridges. Yes, a, a lot of a lot of my children are following me, wow. so certainly it's important for me to build bridges. Mm -hmm. And what better place than, of course, here where I, I eat, work, breathe, have fun at Sanford. So we got to be involved in community for that. Right. And uh, one of the things I did, I uh, found out about Betsy Stringfield. Mm. Oh, we got shrimp in here. Look at that. <laughs> shrimp and grits. You better get a little cold, yeah. but it's still Let's good. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Good. <laughs> we, um, Betsy Stringfield was a woman I found out about a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And phenomenal, phenomenal. That woman, although deceased now, she's yeah. in, in, 80, in 93, she passed away at 83 years old changed my life because this woman did uh, 48 states eight times mm -hmm. in the 30s and 40s and as a woman of color and when I seen a picture of her I go oh that looks like me it does it yeah. does you have a beautiful picture on the wall that, yes of yes. her and I remember the first time I saw it I was like she <laughs> take my picture <laughs> but, yeah to, to have the high cheekbones yes. the, and know, a beautiful chocolate, chocolate woman on a bike Girl. Letting people know yeah. that I got this. I, I love, love she that. Was. Yes. She's a phenomenal woman. Mm -hmm. and in 1936, she's laying across her bike like she's, you know, like it was 2018. Yes. Or 19 now. So right? to see that, and it was like, wow, this is 1936 when it wasn't um, politically correct, so to speak. Yes. So the climate at that time was very different. Mm -hmm. And this woman did 48 states eight times in the course wow. of 10 years as a U.S. Army motorcycle dispatch civilian. So not only was the Army not enlisting women, but somehow she got in there anyway mm -hmm. and delivered orders to the Army men during World War II. Wow. So I did my little bout. Uh, I did 48 states in order to get her inducted into the Harley Davidson Museum. And at first, the odds were against me. Mm -hmm. But um, where, uh, you know, where someone says no, and you pray on it, you say, God, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna try, and let's just see. And it was the best thing. She was inducted into the Harley Davidson Museum. Wow. September 15, 2016. That is so awesome. Because um, be partly of me, you know. Oh my God. I say uh, much because of the people along the way, and certainly God. Um, just giving me strength and faith, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm, I'm glad it's done. I will never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> At least not in 27 days. But 27, 27 days. days solo across. across America. Wow. Well, as they call the lower 48, so 48 days. Wow. You know, it changed my life, I will say. It, it, it created me to come back to this building now where I'm in, in Chantel's. Because I was Chantel's Cafe before, right? But after that ride, I called it Chantel's Justin Till. Mm. You know, because Justin Till, um, something else happened. Right. <laughs> I hear that. I like that. I like so, that. So it's certainly not the final chapter, by all means, but but it's um, you know, getting ready for whatever coming. Oh my God! And you are part of the. Uh, motorcycle community. Oh, yeah. So you guys do a lot of different rides. You actually have um, a brunch here. Is it every I Sunday? Do. Every fourth Sunday. Every fourth Sunday. Every fourth Sunday so we do a call. We call it a biker's brunch. Oh my God! But uh, as a family, instead of bikers going bar hopping, yeah. You know, it's certainly hard to hold two wheels up drinking. Mm -hmm. So eating is still hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not as hard. So we do a biker's brunch, fam bring your family. Uh -huh. I always say people, if you don't have a bike, just be biker friendly. You're good. I like that. You know? I'm, I'm going to taste this last dish. Please go ahead. This last dish we have here. Mm -hmm. And those are coconut grits, no dairy. Coconut grits. Oh my gosh. And, but it's creamy from the coconut milk. So you almost think it's cheese, you know? This is so good. And I'm allergic to shrimp, so I can't even taste oh. it. 
you know, but no, 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 you're good. <laughs> no, I know it's good because I'll it's smell it as I'm mixing the ingredients. It's really, really good. It's good. It's I love that. I love that. Let's talk about the different awards you've won as a chef for the restaurant. What is that like for you? How humbling is that to have people enjoy what you create? It's like, wow. I'm still shocked. I'm still surprised. Just as you're eating, I'm like, you know, when someone walks through that door, I'm, I'm grateful, mm. I'm thankful, and I'm excited because, wow, they wanted to eat here with me. And that feeling in the five and a half years, mm -hmm. and the years prior to me cooking, I'm still excited, you know, because, um, you know, maybe because I'm a, 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 they call a foodie now, but <laughs> I remember when it used to be called greedy. <laughs> so I'm over and um, I'm, I'm excited about it and the fact that, Someone to take time out and say, "Hey, this is that good. They want to give me an award. I'm going. I'm again shocked. Um, I'm amazed, but I do enjoy it. So the fact that um, they paid me to do something that I enjoy doing, I do it for free. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm grateful. Oh so, my God! So I'm gonna be so here. Awesome. Hopefully they'll still have me. Oh my gosh! And then you have you've been in the newspaper several times. And what's coming up for you? I, I heard that you're going to be on some, um, some television TV shows. Right, right. Oh my gosh, tell me a little bit about that. We got, what is it? We got um, February 23rd, uh -huh. we have a show called Raw Travel, mm. which is uh, this strange guy who goes all over the world yeah. doing strange things, but one of the great things he loves doing is tasting food. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to me about it, I go, well, you like tasting strange food, so why me? They're like, no, we heard about you when we were, wow. when we were down in South America. I'm like, oh, okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, well. And so he was like, well, we want to come up here and do a show. Mm -hmm. And at first I thought they wanted to do a show about Sanford, um, and I was just going to feed them lunch. Right. And lo and behold, we end up doing about a six-hour a segment wow. of, on, on myself and the food, and mm -hmm. it airs February 23rd. Excellent. Off that same segment, we got a little pilot um, done for Food Network. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, it's, I, I, I'm just, again, amazed. Um, I, again, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, if, you know, I can cook for the masses, mm. I don't mind. Mm. So, and my kids, as long as they're helping me, we're good. And I love that, that the, it's a family business. It's so awesome. Yeah, your server tonight was Miss Sage. She's my number nine. Oh my goodness. Come on yeah. in. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. Stay high. <laughs> she can sit down. Oh my God. So how is it being a part of such a wonderful restaurant and establishment? It's good. It's like talk uh, loud. It's good. It's like being a part of it's like a family business, so it's something that like a lot of families don't get to do. Talk mm. loud. It's something that a lot of families don't get to do, so it's like fun. Oh, and how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Do you like to cook? Yes. What's your favorite thing you like to make? Well, I can make a lot of things, so. Oh, girl, brag. Okay, what, girl do you, brag. what do you like to eat that I cook then? Jerk chicken Philly. Yeah, I'm jerk chicken, chicken Philly. Philly. That is good. That is good. That was the first thing I had here. Is a jerk chicken Philly. I love it. Oh my gosh, I want to thank you both for taking the time out and sitting with us. And I love the whole concept of Chantel's Just Chantel. But before we go, I love you so much. Let the people know where you are, where you're located, how they can get in contact with you, and how they can actually follow you. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm on, uh, listen, uh, social media, of course, Facebook, um, Chantel's Cafe, I believe it is, and on social and Instagram and Twitter, Chantel's Just Until. Right. Um, what else? Uh, uh, the website is or Order Chantels, I believe. Mm -hmm. Orderchantels.com. 
maybe a little wrong on that. One of the kids are handling it, <laughs> you know. But certainly um, Google as well. Um, I heard we're number one on Google search yes. for the last two months. Yes. So Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. They still want me to pay for it, though. I was like, no. <laughs> but um, definitely reach out. I always, best soul is best. We just won the best Southern cuisine Excellent. Um, last month for 2018. Mm -hmm. So I think all those keywords are certainly worth but uh, Chantel with an S, S H A N T E L L. Just like the Just shirt. That's right. Just until. And, and come in on and the, the week. address? 503 Sanford Avenue, Sanford, Florida. Definitely. I would enjoy seeing you. If you don't see me, you'll see many that look like me. <laughs> <laughs> I love you know? it. I love it. Thank you so, so much, guys. It's your host, Lori Lovell Bar, and this was In My City. Follow us on all our social media pages. <laughs>